What's up, everybody? Welcome to Studio Insights, the place where you get to come behind the scenes of our studio, Bell Vista Studios, and join our world and what we're working on. And today, Vic and I, we're starting a new project. Um, and so we've done the creative conversation for a client and we've gone into the brainstorming mode. What is possible for this solution? So we actually today did some research to inspire us to think differently. And for me, this inspiration was inspired by some friends that are from South America, quite creative themselves so I was like well why is it that their culture is so creative let's learn from that to inspire us in our team and the solutions that we create so friends of mine gave me like lists of museums festivals so Vic and I went off and researched them based on the problem we're trying to solve for our client and we're just going to share together now for the first time some of our ideas that we may pursue or that might sim stimulate what we're going to work on for this project but we only, we're very fresh in the project. Um, so we only have a loose idea of where things are at. We're not officially like doing, we're just kind of, what's it called? Divergent thinking, blue sky, anything is possible. So I am going to share my screen. And based on our first creative conversation, which you can learn more about in on our YouTube channel um, or have a look at the human centered design course on the creator hub because you can get the free preview to figure out what that's about. But it's a set of questions that allows us to understand what is the true problem we are trying to solve. So very roughly, basically, the problem we're trying to solve in the training project that we're working on at the moment is success is the management of meeting the basic needs of the community um which is a group of people in a place in australia with their shelter food medical needs for example until a disaster is over so it's helping the people that manage these things for these people until it is safe to return to their lives um and then i just had to think as i was going through what's more specifically from an id perspective what do i need to be considering and I think this comes from some of the pain points and challenges that people might be facing when they're in that role, helping someone that's potentially lost everything. Um, and it's a stressful situation and you've got a process to go through and you have many stakeholders. So I was just trying to think about what might be going on for the person we need to train, the people that help run those centers and serve the community as well as the community. So I think my solutions to help me are around creating an experience for the person that's in the center because they don't know how long they're going to be there but also for the people working there so for the people working there they definitely need to create time or space to for themselves to be able to think when they've got so many priorities coming at them and also for people to be the community to be patient with them because obviously they're going to have demands but they're not the only priority of this one person who's dealing with many things, but also their needs are really important because they haven't got their basic human needs met. Um, and, and how do you get the people that are working there to think on their feet? How can I create a pause moment? And also how can we get them to have emotion to care? Because the people that are working there, are they tend to be volunteering. They're just stepping up in this moment of disaster. So it's not like they've been training all their lives for it um they're there because they want to be there and support but they also it's not their everyday life to do this so how do we give them the emotion to care and to not forget when they are tired or others are tired and they have a job to do but they also need to like manage themselves which is to do with like self-care and then also how to communicate um to everyone or update everyone at all people for all people at all times in the most effective way. So there were just some other things that I jotted down for myself. Um, and yeah, so I'll just present some of the ideas. So we went and had a look at museums, specifically in Chile, Santiago, um, like, yeah, museums, galleries, video game ones, film ones, um, art, festivals. There was a mushroom festival, literally growing mushrooms and stuff, which I did get inspired about. Um, so yeah. A few, we won't explain all of them, but this will just help 
hopefully inspire you to think about how you can be inspired for the solutions you create. At the moment, we don't know what the training is going to look like. We don't know if it's going to be e-learning, virtual, in-person. Um, these are ad hoc people coming to learn for a specific reason. They are geographically dispersed by a lot of space. Um, their resources are very minimal. Yeah, all of those things are challenges. So um, this one, I just this actually inspired me. I was just thinking about the colors and it made me think about the roles that different people played. And for this, I was thinking oh, it would be cool if they had like little, like they wore different colors in the center so people could say, ah, the blue people, they're the helpers. These are the people serving food or giving resources out. And these are for some other reason. So I thought maybe they wear colors or something identifies different sections of people at a glance. Um, this one I was thinking it'd be cool if there was like, or it inspired in me to have like a mural or a, a map of the services available. So you could be like, ah, oh, that's where the facilities are. This is where I can like register my stuff. This is where I can sleep overnight. Um, so it was just basically a big map so you don't have to ask people because I think if I think about creating time and freeing time up for the people that are working there, as much as we can provide the information for the community to actually find the answers themselves, that would be really helpful. So a whole wall that's basically a map. Um, this inspired me to think of personas. So for example, like we can forget that we're serving a human because we're going through a form and supporting them so I was like it'd be cool if we could remember actually and there's another one down further which I thought was quite cool where is it it's basically a mirror and the guy is no, I'm just revealing it. so it's mirrors but he smashes in and then it starts to reveal colors and images behind the mirrors over time and I was just thinking if we had like a persona sitting there but behind it it's like what's going on for this person it's like they're devastated potentially they've lost all of the, like their house um family members loved ones pets something like that so trying to think what's behind going on for the person we're actually like filling out a form for or supporting um this i was thinking for the training itself it actually inspired like a little i was just thinking of like the dump trucks and the sand pits that kids play in they build like little cities and stuff and like one of the things they need to do is lay out the evacuation centers and stuff. So I was thinking if we could create like a little Lego city and use toys for them to think about, okay, what's going on? What's the flow? What's the experience? If they're just, yeah, basically having them be able to like plan it with tangible things in advance. And that also reminds me of those computer games like The Sims and like Roller Coaster mm -hmm. Tycoon. Yeah. yeah that's what came to mind um going back to the experience for the people this inspired like an arts and crafts like a box basically of books um also like maybe a movie projector puzzles because I think people might be in there and they're like they can get bored so they cause trouble they can they need basically their minds to be occupied <coughs> Worry. Um, they might not have internet, all of this sort of stuff. So I was think thinking if there was just a box that was full of activities to keep people occupied mm -hmm. so that people could do their job and that people would be only reaching out when they need support. Again, just creating the space. Uh, I will just skip some things. I think this was another thing in terms of creating that space and also an experience is to do like a community project. So mm -hmm. while you're in there, you could like, think of a like this is just like creating something together about like what are we experiencing in the center um and it might be like a sense of community support love like and it also then creates this sort of ecosystem or culture that they want to be part of so like uh, this inspired me to think of like a peace dove and then you draw or make your own dove and then what it represents like the values the type of communication so that when you're trying to promote that out there then you're also acting from that place so i just think it minimizes stress discomfort it gives that sense of community collaboration um for that. this was inspiring just like a registration book when you come in or like signs on entry so people know what's going on where to find things 
um, using symbolism that just absolutely makes sense, like stop, warning, pause, go. So like, I don't know, like the toilet's occupied or we're serving food now. We're not serving food now. Mm -hmm. So a lot of this is still around the experience. Um, having quotes around the place that like prompt well-being. Um, in terms of the training solution itself, coming up with stories and connecting the dots. So like it's like it could open with it's potentially the worst day of the person's life. You're already under resource, trying your best. And then like empathizing with the person that's doing the training and saying, we know you are not fully equipped for this situation, but also this is going on for the other person and setting that scene. And then I thought about this just inspired like an interactive video. So could we, or an interactive 360 photo where we set up an evacuation center. Um, and I think then, oh no, I'll go. Uh, so that they could assess a scene like this and go, ah, that lighting is like really poor. It's not going to help people. Um, like, can it be turned off or dimmed at nighttime, but people can still come in through the buses and fill out paperwork. Um, the layout there is causing a trip hazard. It's so basically looking for opportunities to pay attention to improve or do better when they actually create their evacuation center. Um, this one's a good example. It's a climate change one done by Martin Percy. He's really good at these kinds of things. But the idea is that you're on like a Zoom call and it's an interactive webinar. So they play like videos and stats and say this is happening. And then this pops up on screen and everyone chips in and says, ah, this is the answer to the question. And then you have a discussion around what would you do or you tell stories. So I was thinking about the experience maybe being uh yeah, like an interactive webinar is the training rather than an in-person scenario or something like that. This one inspired like an ongoing community of practice and discussion. I don't know what that would look like, but ongoing challenges outside of the training throughout the year. Because if there's only one event per year or one event every two years, whether that's a disaster event or the training event, like how do you keep people fresh and caring and prepared for this critical time? Um, what else have I got? As that inspired like an escape room. Could we create an escape room for people to deal with this? And also there was another thing, like also a board game. So instead of doing like an e-learning training, could we create a board game that they can play in person or like in the workplace or <laughs> amongst all the people that will actually support in a disaster? And that can be done in an online version, but it can also be like a physical board game. Um, what else have I got? This inspired me to think about telling stories like of disasters in the past, the things that went through people's heads, um, how they could have been supported better, what made an impact, what did they need? So this could be like a podcast series throughout the year. So just kind of to build empathy. And this was around like creating a place back to the experience for this community when they're in the centers, a place where they can come together, where they can feel safe, where they can have conversation, connection. And then this mushroom thing was around like telling the journey of you've come into the center, you've been registered, then you might like go and sleep. What's to come next? How many days might you be here? You've been processed. What are you entitled to? So it's just kind of people could see a visual up on the work on the wall and basically answer their own questions or at least have some information on their journey so they're not asking three volunteers at the centre who are serving hundreds of people. Mm -hmm. um, and that is all I had in terms of inspiration. For me, what I'll be looking at next, um, and I'm working on it tomorrow, so I did go into a lot of depth just to help me prepare for basically my next steps. Okay, so I will be looking at like not getting caught up in the shiny ideas that I think are really cool and going, okay, if these are the problems that I'm trying to solve, which ones are the easiest and most effective of my ideas to start putting um, emphasis on them that will start solving one of these or many of these. And that's how I'll move forward with getting to a storyboard stage. So that is me. Any thoughts or reflections or questions? Um, 
I feel like there are some really good ideas in there. I definitely had similar ones, but it's interesting that I got them from, like, I have different screenshots of, like, what, oh, cool. we ended up with similar ideas, but from different, like, stimulus, I guess. I love that. Um, but, yeah, I guess one question I would have, because I felt like I got a little bit overwhelmed doing it, but it's only now hearing you share your ideas, it's, like, clicked mm. what part of it can feel overwhelming when you're looking for ideas. Um, I think it's between like when we talk about the experience and it's like these things would be targeted at the people who yes. have been affected but then the other side of it is like the actual workers who are there like I, I did have ideas for both but I was sort of like jumping in between mm -hmm. and then I'll look at something and then be like oh wait <laughs> Do I actually need something for this person or should I be looking more for this other person? Because yeah. like, it is definitely tied in together. If the experience is better and the people who are affected who are like using the centres are more informed, that takes the pressure off the workers. But then it's like the workers still need to know how to deal with things themselves. Like it does, you do need to target both. Yeah. But that wasn't really, sorry, but yeah, I guess... <laughs> when there is like multiple audiences because it's this early in the stage is it just kind of like a free-for-all when you look for ideas um I think for us the two of us like literally right now yes because we didn't have it as clearly defined as we would for a client like mm -hmm. I'll be clearly defining it tomorrow but for the purpose I also found myself exactly how you just described yeah. I was like oh what's the training going to be and then the first thing prompted me to go ah the the community yeah. like so not necessarily who's the training for and then I was like ah but okay go back to the people you're creating the training for and that's where I I was like okay well what do the people I'm creating the training for need mm -hmm. so I had to figure that out for myself a bit more because otherwise I was just like the the people that are in the community center need like uh like chill space da, da, da. and I was like okay yeah. but like cool if you've created all that this is literally was my thought process um if you've created all that then the people that are serving them have the best environment to do what mm -hmm. they need to do what do they need to do and then that's yeah. where it reined me back to okay there's certain skills and it would be best for them to create it in this way or like learn it this way so that's why mine is very much a blend and yeah. exactly how you described it but I yeah. think it definitely shows the importance it's okay for where we're at in our process but it does show the importance of having a very like we always say this mm. in an approved success statement because even that is that's not even refined in any way it's just like mm, loosely success looks like this but we yeah. as a team or with the client haven't gotten down to what is success Mm -hmm. um and from if that was locked down then we'd know the learning objectives and normally when we do the brainstorming we have success and the learning objectives approved and yeah. also the audience so we would have mm -hmm. at that point known it's the two or it's the one and that's yeah. why we both identified in this instance like ah, there's yeah. two things that need to be solved which is good because now I know now moving into the next step that I'll have to consider it anyway considering it came up for both of us so strongly yeah yeah oh trust um, the <laughs> yeah that, no, that does make perfect myself. sense <laughs> <laughs> as always it makes perfect sense <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, this is great. <laughs> yeah. um I don't think I have any other questions though yeah, cool. Okay, you want to? I'd love to see some of the things that you're like. I got the same outcome, but this is the thing that inspired. So I'm going to stop sharing. And yeah. You can okay. And anything my, else? I did. I also had my images really small, and I was trying to blow them up quickly. So some of them are like a bit distorted, but I think you'll get the gist. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! Wait, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Let me share my screen. Um. Oh, I saw that as well. Yeah. Which wasn't, I mean, it's blurry in that, but when I saw it, I thought it was a map. So I jumped, I went to the same thing of like, oh, it'd be good as soon as people show up to have a map. Not yeah. only of the layout, but also of like, this is what we do here. So just like to yes. set expectations from the beginning. Um, to, yeah, to help the community understand like, this is what's yeah. going to be available. Um, 
but also having like some sort of print off of it as well because I could all if there's like a big influx of people I can see that maybe just one thing on a wall somewhere could get like Mm. you know if everyone crams in or like runs over to like try and see it but having yeah something like tangible for them to be like this is what is available here yeah obviously you're waiting to get in or whatever it is but like yeah set the standard a bit from the beginning so that would hopefully eliminate a lot of questions that people might want to run and ask immediately um this so this sort of went like (laughs) down a rabbit hole a little bit but when I looked at this inspo it reminded me of like theme parks when there's Mm. you're queuing for a ride and it's like a two-hour wait and you might go through like a little house and there's music and all that stuff which I don't know about in a disaster sort of (laughs) crisis situation that like things like music and like it's not going to be like a themed event but even just having like the wait times for things um again would help maybe reduce questions and it won't necessarily make because when people are stressed and they want help like seeing a sign saying this is going to take two hours won't necessarily make them any happier but it's just again setting expectations and like reducing questions hopefully that give then gives the volunteers space to get people through quicker or whatever it is that's (laughs) so cool I love that like because even you know like when the ride is like 45 minutes or 90 minutes you're like oh but you know yeah like I'm committing to being here yeah that idea and then it's not like showing up and thinking oh this is an emergency they're going to help me straight away and so actually that's not realistic like (laughs) they would love to but just get that out of your head straight away sort of thing (laughs) And it makes me even think, like, because I think a lot of the time they're under-resourced with staff. So even having some all of our staff are at the moment Mm -hmm. because, like, you could be like, oh, my God, they only have three people. And it's just like, yeah, there's actually only three people to serve 100 people or whatever. So it might help, like, them empathise. And then I love the idea of, like, do you have the... There's like, um, um, sorry, I'm losing your. If you need medical assistance, yeah. Sorry, all good. Um, yeah, like if you need medical assistance, it is like don't worry about registering. Go straight to this person, for example. Mm. Love that. Thank you. Yeah, I love that with the how you said the badges as well, like the coloured. Because there's mm-hmm. nothing worse than when you're in a queue waiting and you see all these people and you're like, they're standing around doing nothing or, like, why can't they help? But if you've already, like, shown, oh, they actually are doing something completely different, like, that can get rid of some mm-hmm. of the frustration as well and help yeah. people understand, like, not every... First of all, there's not... We're understaffed, but also, like, everyone here is responsible for different things. They're not... Yeah, different priorities, I guess. <laughs> um this I actually got from the incorrect website that I went, went on to. Um, so this inspo came from Italy, not South America. <laughs> um, but it was it was some sort of workshop where it was for kids, like focused on children. Um, and there's like a workshop where they hear a story, but then the kids go away and they paint like their pillowcases. Aww. And the whole thing is like to help them dream. They keep dreaming and it's about art. So that made me think of... This was one where it could be targeted at the workers as well as the community. But for workers, what's, like, something they could do? Because it would be a really stressful position to be in. And I can imagine you'd see a lot of, like, potentially sad and bad things. But, like, what's something they can do at the end of their shift or, like, before they go to bed that's, like, a self-care type thing so that when they go to sleep they can actually have a good sleep and then that, like, prepares them better for to come back the next day or whatever it is. Um, But then it also made me think of if there's families showing up and there's little kids or even older kids, like are there resources to help parents explain to the kids what is going on? Like they might not know how to say it the right way and then that can cause like panic or crying babies and toddlers and stuff everywhere. But like just simple things. And it could even be like how you said the... um, you had the quotes, like the well-being quotes, but like phrases of like, this is what you can say to 
this yeah. is how you can explain it, like that kind of thing. Yeah. <clears throat> um, cool. This I think was similar to one of yours as well, like some sort of mural. Uh, yeah, I had mural drawing board or even like a writing board where people can go and it could even, like it could be venting, like someone might just want to write like, I hate this, I'm like miserable or whatever it is, but like a place to go to get it out, put it all up together and they can like look at what other people have written, yeah, relate to it. They might get like, I don't know, inspired by it or just read things that make them feel a bit better. Um, and any age too, like little kids can draw a little yeah. scribbles or whatever it is, but something that everyone can contribute to, even the people who work there, like if they want to put something yeah. on there that they think is helpful, like something like that. That's cool. Um, I j Sorry, just expanding on that. <coughs> it makes me think about, because like the venting, I'd say there's so much like cursing and things and then it's like who's in the room and like the taboo of all that sort of stuff. So it could be like the mural board, but you have like a, almost like a, a black and a white box. So the white mm -hmm. one is like, and it's like a reflection time so if you've got something you need to get off your chest curse and tell all the horrible things into the black box and then the white mm. one but people can actually read them and yeah. then the mural is more around send your message to the person's letter that you read so then mm. it becomes a message of hope or good that then yeah. spreads to everyone i oh, know i that this yeah, I just wanted to share. And from, yeah. I think it's cool, but also just from a perspective of like when you do the brainstorming in a team like this, is how one idea can prevent or provoke another expansion mm. of it. Yeah, I love that. Um, and then the last one I had was a library of some sort, which again could be for the people working there or for the people yeah. who need to stay there. So for workers, it could be things that help them through it, like, Again, it could be self-care stuff or it could be manuals or checklists or whatever, like, resources are useful to them to do their job. Yeah. But then also for the community. And for the community, it could be, like, when you're talking about the crafts area and stuff like that, it could be even, like, just, I know in Brisbane there's, like, the street libraries where people, like, leave yeah. a book behind and take a book. So it could be something that's, like, recreational or it's support mm. services it, all in one spot, like, yeah, pamphlets and resources that can help people impacted. Yeah. Um, or again, self help stuff for the community members, or just like, <laughs> here's a book to amuse yourself with. <laughs> yeah, I love that. That's cool. Um, but yeah, that was mine. So yeah, I feel like there was some similarities in what you had, but yeah, from different inspo pictures and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Thank you. Um, let's summarize our takeaways from that just to help other people. I think definitely the first one that's coming for me is like the importance of brainstorming, like to not just go in and do, ah, I'm going to do e-learning because I always do e-learning. And like, even for us, it's like training is not always the solution, which definitely both of us came up with that as a, we need to think about the people that are there as well. So I think it's really important to know what's the problem you're trying to solve, who is it for, and then that's our human-centered design process, but also around, yeah, be stimulated outside of the norm to think about the best way to train it. So that would be my summary, I think. And I'm mm -hmm. now I'm feeling very grateful that we're we just did this because I know we do it with our client. But for me, I'm a step ahead at the moment doing it us together. And now I'm like yeah. really grateful that I've created the space because I'm about to do the ID tomorrow and prepare for the workshop. So I'm like, ah, I'm ready. So yeah. yeah, that's my summary. So thank you. Do you want me to share a summary? <laughs> yeah, you have any. <laughs> <laughs> Although I was, yeah. hearing your summary though, I'm like, I do, I don't know. I definitely did still approach it a little bit differently in my mind because I, I know that, things like this are good because it opens us up to like what well, I see it as opening us to like what else outside of e-learning or training but I guess with some of these ideas I was thinking there'd still be like an element of that as like the foundation like people need to be qualified to I don't know give first aid or to know the policies if they're giving people funding like all that sort of stuff this was to me like 
but what else would they need? Like that only hits that component, but to get the, like to look at the whole experience. Yeah. I would say it's rare that just e-learning is going to hit the mark on even just like those few things that we picked up on, like people don't like waiting in queues or <laughs> like people are going to be angry. Like just giving someone e-learning isn't necessarily going to fix that. No. But I, yeah, I definitely saw these as complementary to like, yeah, what I would consider a standard or like I don't know compliancy type training in a way. Yeah, and I think like this situation is so complex. So to create a training for the ideal solution, everyone, all the users are like, it never plays out how you think it's going to be. It can mm -hmm. be dead all day, or you can have five hundred people arrive at the same time. So. Yeah you have to consider that and for me it's like just expanding on what you shared what it stimulated for me was like uh like it's literally like here's a one pager of possible things that you need to mm -hmm. consider like basically you're in charge of xyz like register their details do they need medical support do they need financial assistance and they need like or like the basic needs actually that's probably what it is basic human needs how can you best serve them in that situation? And it's unpredictable. So can we create an unpredictable something for them? Mm -hmm. And for that, it needs to be dynamic in that, like an e-learning is not going to step you through like, okay, so if they need food and shelter, it's these things. Da, 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 da. It's more like, okay, so you're landed with everything. And now you've got like, for example, in a board game, it's like you pull the card and it's like, and this dr other thing has happened. And now you have this person screaming at you. So it's like, how do you create something that's so like chaotic mm. that makes you um, respond and experience it in advance where it's yeah. not going to be a logical thing? Mm. That will be a challenge though for me tomorrow when I'm doing the ID is what is the logic? Like, can I create a a simple process of one question or something that they can apply in all situations, yeah. like yeah. an acronym or something like that. So it's mm. like, you know, someone's screaming at me. I have 500 people coming through the door. I'm now dead. There's two dogs fighting. There's kids screaming, whatever. What is the one thing you need to remember regardless of the situation? Mm. Yeah. Hey, that's good. That's revealing. <laughs> oh. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah cool okay thank you um all right well that concludes this episode of studio insight so just so you know that yeah we're going to go away basically with what i said there i'm going to prepare for the discovery workshop is which is where we go okay this is the problem we're trying to solve for these kinds of people what are the situations what's the context what's the activities what is that like an empathy map and then we will actually do a brainstorming with the client after that and then get into the storyboarding from there. But you can learn our process in the human centered design cohorts, the online course. You can hire us to do just brainstorming like this for your problem. And then you can go away and create it. Anyway, check it out on bellvistastudios.com. And thank you for choosing to learn with us. What's up, awesome human? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of myself, and the Bell Vista Studios team for continuously choosing to learn with us. We really appreciate it. If the tips and the insights and the context resonate with you and you want to take your skills to the next level or you want to make your life way easier, you will love our Creator Hub. The Creator Hub is a place for people like you and us. Basically, it's the stuff that we use internally at Bell Vista Studios and then we just share it publicly with you. The Creator Hub is created by instructional designers for instructional designers. And what you'll love there at the moment is we've got a quiz, Could I Be a Better Instructional Designer? That has so much tips in the feedback if you're interested in human-centered design or just taking your skills to the next level in terms of the solutions you're creating, the problems you want to solve. But in there as well, aren't we cute? That's us. Um, but we've got the coaching courses, freebies give us gratitude and also we've got some templates and basically they're always around the lens of learning experience design instructional design and e-learning so a human-centered design focus is very 
much what we're about at Bell Vista Studio. So putting your learners at the heart of a solution and creating something for their needs. So there's the human centered design stuff and then we've also got the business stuff. So this is the stuff they don't teach you about when you wanna become a freelancer or a consultant in the instructional design world. So go check it out. The link is in the description. You can check out everything that is available for you. Thank you for choosing to learn with us. Continuously invest in your skills. You will be rewarded as an instructional designer. Share this stuff, share it with other people because when we are better instructional designers, we create better solutions that create better humans that create a better world. So we have a very important role and I'm excited to be on this journey with you. Have an awesome day.